Hello everyone. Today we are going to look at this paper which is titled An image is worth 16 cross 16 words. Transformers for image recognition at scale. As the title suggests, uh, this paper talks about using transformers for image recognition and uh, it was published at a conference uh, called ICLR in uh, 2021. So it came around three uh, years back. Uh, the particular architecture that is mentioned here is also known as vision transformers. And uh, today we are going to look at the architecture behind vision transformers. How do they exactly work and why are they so powerful? Uh, so we'll go through the paper step by step. We'll start with the abstract and then moves into and then move into more details. Again, the research has been conducted uh, by the brain team at Google Research. So let's let's uh, make a note of this as well. So let's start with the abstract. Uh, the abstract says that while the transformer architecture has been uh, the de facto uh, standard for natural language processing tasks, its applications to computer vision remain limited. In vision, uh, attention is either applied in conjunction with convolutional networks or used to replace certain components of convolutional networks while keeping their overall structure in place. Uh, so basically what had been happening till the year 2021 was that people uh, for image recognition tasks were still using CNN and they were applying uh, attention mechanisms on top of it. So imagine a scenario where you are feeding an image into a network and uh, you have multiple convolutional layers, you learn some uh, representations for the image. After that, you apply attention mechanisms and then you again uh, convert that into an output layer. This was something where you could see that, okay, transformer architecture is being used, but the CNN architecture is still being preserved. People had not completely eliminated the CNN architecture. Uh, so interesting because the transformer paper came out in 2017 and people were still trying to introduce that to image recognition tasks, but not a complete 100% change from CNN networks yet. Uh, when pre-trained on large amounts of data and transferred to multiple bit sized or small recognition benchmarks, vision transformer or VIT attains excellent results compared to the state of the art convolutional networks. Okay, so let us write down some of the key things that uh, we have learned over here. Uh, up till 2021, CNNs were still used for image recognition tasks uh, for large data sets. VITs achieve better performance. Let's, let's let's go ahead. Self-attention based architectures in particular transformers have become uh, the model of choice in natural language processing. The dominant approach is to pre-train on a large text corpus and then fine tune on a smaller task specific data set. Thanks to transformers computational efficiency and scalability. It has become possible to train models of unprecedented size with over 100 billion parameters. However, in computer vision, CNN architecture still remain very much uh, dominant. Uh, inspired by NLP successes, uh, multiple works have tried to incorporate CNN architecture with self-attention but they have not been very successful. Uh, okay. Uh, inspired by the transformer scaling success in NLP, we experiment with applying a standard transformer directly to images with fewest uh, possible modifications. 
to do so we split an image into patches and provide the sequence of linear embeddings of the patches as an input to a transformer image patches are treated the same way as tokens in an nlp application so this is quite interesting when trained on mid size data sets such as image net uh, vision transformers yield modest accuracies of a few percentage points below resnets of comparable size this might be seemingly discouraging however for uh, larger data sets they work very very well and 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 the picture is very different we will try to see uh, why this happens uh, why is that for mid sized uh, data sets uh, vision transformers do not work as well as they work for large size data sets uh, so the reason has to do with something called inductive biases which are inherent to cnns we will be looking at that as well closely uh, okay so first of all let's try to uh, understand the basic task of uh, applying attention mechanism onto an image right so uh, if you if you remember what uh, attention is exactly if you have a set of words let's say if you have a set of words let's say i have <coughs> i have five words <coughs> what attention uh, exactly does is that it arranges let's say these five words into a matrix of 5 by 5 and for uh, every single word there is a key there is a value and there is a query attached the size of this matrix is obviously 5 by 5 which is 25 so the number of entries are going to be uh, scaling as n square where n is the number of words in that particular sequence that you are looking at in this example n was equal to 5 so the number of uh, entries that we are looking at is is equal to 25 now we are looking at an image right what's going to happen is that instead of words you have this image so let's say we have a 5 by 5 image right we have a 5 by 5 image and what is going to happen in this attention is that every single pixel is going to attend to every other pixel in this image for example this pixel attends to this this pixel also attends to this this pixel also attends to this so uh, how much is this going to scale by can you think about it how much is the number of calculations uh, that we need to perform for a self attention mechanism which is applied to an image is it going to be 5 to the power 2 5 to the power 4 or 5 to the power 8 so uh, you can imagine this uh, entire uh, sequence to be let's say of 25 entries that is the values of 25 pixels so the number of operations that are going to be required are 25 square which is equal to 5 to the power 4 so what we essentially see is that when we are applying self attention mechanisms for an image uh the number of operations that we need to do are very large in fact they scale in a quadratic manner that is why it becomes intractable to apply the complete transformer architecture directly to an image as it is um maybe that was the reason why four years even after the transformer architecture was developed people were not able to successfully apply the architecture for image related tasks because of uh the quadratic nature of the attention matrix so what did people uh uh do in that case 
so there was one approach which was followed what that approach did was that uh, let's say this is an image uh, sorry for that <laughs> and let's say you are uh, looking at this particular entry now what uh, these papers proposed was that instead of looking at all the pixels away from this particular pixel i am just going to focus on a neighborhood that's it i'm just going to focus on this small neighborhood and i'm going to restrict my attention matrix to only this neighborhood i am not going to be looking at far away points what this did was that it uh, essentially reduced the number of computations but it kind of also uh, you know eliminated the main power of attention mechanisms which to which was to have uh, every single token in a sequence relate to every other token in that sequence so even though these uh, ideas were creative you can essentially see that this operation is very similar to a convolution operation remember that in a convolution operation we have a filter we have a filter uh, essentially let's say this is the filter and this filter goes through every single patch of the image and then there is a dot product uh, and 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 a transformation applied uh, to that patch so essentially every pixel is still uh, being recomputed based on only the neighborhood of that pixel we are not looking at pixels in the corners or very far away so this neighborhood approach in a way was very similar to convolution now uh, the unique thing that is proposed in the vision transformers idea is that what these guys said was that instead of let's say we have an image right what we'll do is that we will uh, divide this image into patches so i have divided this image which is an image of 5 by 5 into 9 patches so 1 2 nine and then we will apply the exact same transformer architecture to all of these nine patches that's it in a way the approach is simple we are still reducing the number of computations but instead of using a neighborhood approach uh, we are clubbing the bunch of pixels into into patches and then uh, these individual patches uh, are going to represent the individual tokens in a sequence for example now we have uh, a word with nine different patches right so now these nine patches or a uh, nine tokens are similar to a sentence which are going to be fed to a transformer architecture you might be having multiple thoughts in your mind right now uh, how does this work how does uh, the transformer know about the positions of my nine patches uh, we are going to look at that in detail uh, i hope the intuition behind the vision transformer is clear based on this particular drawing and the presentation we will go through the paper now to make the introduction uh, and, and and the intuition more clear transformers were uh, proposed by waswani et al for machine translation and have since become the state of the art method in many nlp tasks large transformer based models are of, often pre trained on a large uh, uh, corpora and then fine tuned for the task at hand for example bert and gpt are excellent examples uh naive application of self attention to images would require that each pixel attend to every other pixel this means that we have a quadratic cost a cost in the number of pixels which does not scale to realistic input sizes thus to apply transformers in the context of image processing several approximations have been tried parma et al in 2018 that was immediately after the year transformers were released 
applied the self attention only in local neighborhoods for each query pixel which was what we actually saw over here instead of globally such local multi head dot product self attention blocks can completely replace convolutions in a different line of work sparse transformers employ scalable approximations to global attention in order to be applicable to images an alternative way to scale attention is to apply it to blocks of varying sizes etc so people have tried it in the literature previously as we can see most related to ours is the model of cordonier et al which extracts patches of 2 by 2 from the input image and applies full attention on top this model is very similar to the vision transformer but our work goes further to demonstrate that large scale pre training makes vanilla transformers competitive or even better than state of the art cnns moreover cordonier et al uses a small patch size of 2 by 2 pixels which makes the model applicable only to a small resolution images while we handle medium resolution images as well i would like to note this down uh cordonier et al paper similar 2 by 2 patches uh medium resolution images okay and uh there was one more thing yeah sparse transformers i want to read about this what exactly do sparse transformers mean okay so uh another recent model is image gpt or igpt which applies transformers to image pixels after reducing the image resolution and the color space however the accuracy of this is 72% on image net all right so these people have uh, used uh, two data sets mainly they have used an image net data set and jft data set uh, the jft da uh, data set looks quite large in comparison with uh imaginate data set but let's see let's go ahead so uh okay so let's look at the architecture now what exactly is happening in the architecture for the vision transformer okay so uh <coughs> we'll we'll look at this particular image itself we'll uh, try to understand what is happening over here at the bottom left you can see this is an image which is being fed into the transformer this particular image over here uh now as was discussed in the introduction and the previous section this image is being divided into uh into patches for example see this image is being divided into nine patches so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and these are the set of nine patches over here okay so uh these then become the input now you might be wondering there are nine patches how exactly do i represent these nine patches etc uh these nine patches are simply nine different images and uh you can either imagine them being uh being a vector so let's say the size of these nine patches is uh 4 by 4 let's say so there would be 16 uh, entries in the vector so basically these nine patches are vectors of length 16 uh since there might be three channels also color channels rgb uh you will have size of 16 by 3 Three for the different values for R, G, and B, which also denote the color that is associated uh, with every single pixel, along with the pixel intensity. So these vectors, these uh, nine vectors, then become the input to your model. Now, um, the question that uh, we want to understand is that how does the model know the positions of uh, these nine different vectors? what we are going to do here is that we are going to number them as 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 
सिक्स सेवन एट एंड नाइन नाउ सिमिलर टू वॉट वॉज प्रपोज इन द ट्रांसफॉर्मर आर्किटेक्चर द ट्रांसफॉर्मर एज सच इज नॉट रियली अवेयर ऑफ द पोजिशंस ऑफ द डिफरेंट टोकन्स इन द सीक्वेंस so the positions have to be coded before the input is fed into the attention block now this is exactly what's uh, happening over here this one is being provided along with the input this two is being provided along with the input this three is being provided along with the input etc so you can imagine a vector which is the original input vector being appended by the uh, positional encoding of that particular patch which is what these 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 represent now one option could have been to directly feed the input what these people have done is that uh, they have taken the input vector over here and they have multiplied it by uh, a vector called e which is sort of like a, a linear projection vector and then that becomes the input to the transformer encoder to understand this let's look at the mathematical representation uh, this is not very complex do not get very bothered by this okay so xp1 xp2 xpn are the different patches that we have for example the n represents 9 uh, over here we have nine different patches xp1 xp2 dot 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 xpn represent the nine different input image vectors which are multiplied by this e which is a linear transformation which takes it to a different space we will read about what exactly this e represents and then uh, Uh, instead of appending it is directly added with the position vector e pos that then becomes the input to your transformer right so this is the uh, attention layer uh, msa and this is the multi layer perceptron layer so we'll also look at these uh, two things in detail essentially this becomes the input vector to your transformer which is then uh, again uh, being fed as an input to a multi layer perceptron and this then becomes your output that's it it's it's really very simple once you understand how this is uh, being fed as an input to the transformer uh, transformer encoder block uh, okay so uh, once once we have got this intuition ready also understand that there is this extra class embedding which we feed as an input uh, to the transformer which is also uh, kind of mentioned over here x x class we will we'll read about what exactly this represents but uh, this is something i found to be different uh, than the uh, transformer architecture the rest of the things uh, being pretty much similar in the transformer block itself uh okay so uh this was a basic overview of the entire architecture which is represented in this image we'll try to see uh in their description of vision transformer how they are trying to represent or uh view the architecture as so it says that an overview of the model has been depicted in figure 1 the standard transformer receives an input as a 1d sequence of token and embeddings to handle 2d images we reshape the image into a sequence of flattened patches there are n patches and uh, the size of each patch is p square dot c uh, p dash p is the number of pixels in each patch right so for example if every pixel is 3 by 3 this will be 9 and c is the number of channels rgb so 327 so n is the number of pixels in the image uh, so you can see that if n is more if the number of pixels are more uh the size of each pixel is going to be small 
right so this is what is represented over here if the size of the pixel is small if p is small then n increases you can imagine a number of pixels to be calculated by let's say the area of the entire image uh, image is h multiplied by w the area of each pixel is p multiplied by p so how much are the number of pixels it is area 1 divided by area 2 which is h into w divided by p square is the resulting number of patches the transformer uses a constant latter, uh, latent vector size d through all of its layers so we flatten the patches and map it to d dimensions with a trainable linear projection so uh, this is why this particular projection was applied they wanted to uh, flatten the image and 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 take it to a uh, to a latent space where the size is d so it's multiplied by the by the linear projection vector which is again trained similar to bert class token we prepare we prepend a learnable embedding to the sequence of embedded patches whose state at the output of the transformer uh, transformer encoder serves as image representation y uh, both during pre training and <coughs> and fine tuning a classification head is attached to a zl0 the classification head is implemented by a multi layer perceptron with one hidden layer at pre training time and a single linear layer at fine tuning time so i have made a note of uh, bert class token to understand uh, intuition behind extra class <clears throat> positional embeddings are added to patch embeddings to retain position information we use standard learnable 1d position embeddings since we do not since we have not observed significant performance gains from using advanced 2d aware positional embeddings what is the meaning of 2d aware positional embeddings let's say instead of this 1 2 3 4 etc we have uh, maybe we have like 1 1 2 2 3 3 etc so something like 1 1 for this uh, then 1 2 1 uh, 1 2 1 3 then 2 1 etc um, uh, uh, similar to how we index matrices they have initially tried using uh, these notations or uh, these positional encodings but they do not seem to have a significant advantage so then they stuck with 1 2 3 4 etc and uh, this is the architecture i hope this architecture is clear now uh, this is a layer norm uh, which is also quite common in the transformer architecture you can look at my previous video uh, to understand the transformer architecture in detail but the more important thing is the uh, this thing here msa which is uh, the multi headed self attention and uh, that is where uh, the novelty of this particular paper lies uh, okay, so we note that the vision transformer has much less specific image specific inductive bias than CNNs. In CNNs, uh, locality, two dimensional neighborhood structure, and translational equivariance are baked into each layer throughout the whole model. In VIT, only uh, multi layer perceptron uh, are local and translationally in equivariant, while the self attention layers are global. So you might have realized that, uh, that this term inductive bias is being repeated uh, several times in the paper. Even I was trying to understand what this exactly means and um, the way I am reasoning the meaning of inductive, uh, inductive bias is such that uh, if you look at architectures like multi-layer perceptron or CNNs, uh, we are uh, kind of biased about the network because we are already uh, telling that okay this is how we want the architecture to be yes the weights and biases are learned after the network is trained but the exterior of the model remains fixed imagine that we are trying to manufacture a car where the design of the car the exterior of the car is fixed then the car can take many internal shapes but overall it will going 
it is going to look the same because it's a bias we want the design to be that particular way cnns and mlps are in a way biased however when we look at transformer architecture the reason that they work so well i think is that they are completely generalizable we have not fed any inherent bias into the system uh, i think it's because even the positional encodings we are not feeding so uh, the transformer is not sure uh, which particular weight is coming from which position remember in the neural network architecture we connect every weight to the neurons by lines that is inherently a bias because we are telling that okay this neuron is going to have uh, contributions from all the other neurons in the previous layer in transformers we do not mention anything like that explicitly we allow the network to learn about the representations on their own that is why they have mentioned that it has much less image specific inductive bias compared to cnns and uh, for that same reason i guess it works very well for large set of images but not well for smaller sized images okay let's let just keep this intuition in mind before we go ahead uh, they do mention about uh, a hybrid architecture as an alternative to uh, raw image patches but they do not uh, go into detail about this hybrid architecture so we are not going to uh, focus on what exactly happens in this hybrid architecture etc uh, okay so now uh, after that they uh, they have this uh, section which is called as experiments in the experiment section they evaluated the accuracy of their model and they compared it with some of the benchmarks and uh, this is the table over here so uh, these are their models and these are the benchmark models with uh, respect to which they are comparing essentially the accuracy uh, is is improved for all the different data sets that we are looking at whether they are imagenet imagenet real uh, cfar pets flowers vtab etc uh, this is the computational time that is that it's taking for the architecture to uh, complete so for example here you can see this model transformer model with pixel size which is much higher 16 by 16 uh, when the number of uh, patches size is higher the number of patches will be low as we have seen there is an inverse relationship that's why it takes less time to train uh, however the time taken to train these transformers is significantly less as compared to uh, the time taken to these other networks which are probably based on uh, cnn uh, architectures where there is some amount of inductive biases so the vision transformer works brilliantly on large data sets on huge amounts of data sets where uh, you have a lot of information and without any predefined biases the transformer learns the different representations what is the transformer exactly learning it's uh, it's a bit intuitive so you can see this is these are the input layers and it's attending to the right portions of the input layers very much intuitive right uh, it's like okay so this is the image where we have a dog we have some flowers we have a garden but uh, the most important part of this image that catches your attention is just the dog so this is what you see here also you see the plane here also you see uh, the focus being on some parts of the leaf snake etc essentially i think every different uh, attention layer uh, in the multi layer attention uh, network is trying to focus on different parts of the image which give the most meaning to the image so this kind of makes sense uh, these are the filters which uh, the vision transformers learns again i think these filters look very similar to the cnn filters then uh, these are the position and embedding similarity so there are seven rows and seven columns in the input patch and uh, you can see that for example let's look at this first thing right uh, row 1 row column it's the maximum uh, cosine similarity and the cosine similarity is very low for these uh, entities which are away from that 
so entities which are closer to uh, that particular uh, cell the uh, transformer is learning that the positional similarity and uh, the similarity in the uh, importance of the pixels is more for neighborhood pixels and not for the pixels which are away which is also very intuitive and uh, if if we look at this third image uh, i was trying to understand what this image exactly means so on the x axis we have the depth of the network and on the y axis we have the mean attention distance so one thing we can see is that even for the depth which is not very deep uh the attention is given to literally the entire image because of these different heads the heads are kind of distributed all over the image so even in the uh, initial layers of the network we are kind of focusing on uh all the pixels whereas my guess is that for cnns uh the mean attention distance only increases with the network depth there is uh there is no attention given for further layers in the initial layers for cnns and i guess this is one of the main advantages uh, of transformers as as humans when we look at a particular image we also tend to look at the entire image at once so probably that is being captured better when it comes to a vision transformer so uh this this brings me to the end of uh this particular uh this particular session do give this paper a read it is a very interesting paper and uh, i hope i have made it easy uh, for you to go through and uh, read this paper right now